So it says, starting in verse 4, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried out sorrows, yet we esteem him not stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Right? This is the scripture. Just by this one scripture, you can destroy all sickness and all disease. So repeat after me. By his stripes, by his stripes I, am I am healed. By his stripes, by his stripes I, am I am healed. Now say it like you mean it. By his stripes, by his stripes I, am I am healed. I am free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so just as God forgives us, God also heals us. Remember, it's a package. You cannot separate this, those things. Zach already talked about this a little bit. So you cannot separate healing from salvation or deliverance. It's a package. If you receive one, you receive the other. But so many Christians don't understand that, and so they'll receive salvation and not receive healing and deliverance. And so they live a life being sick and being oppressed and can't wait to get out of here, to get into heaven. But God's will is for us to be in full freedom for our spirit, for our soul, and for our body. Remember that salvation is for our spirit, healing is for our body, deliverance is for our soul. So all three parts... It's a part of the full redemption package is what God provided for us through Jesus for every person that chooses it and accepts it. But he provided it, and we have to accept it. And if we accept it and believe it, what it's written in here, then we're able to utilize those benefits that he provided for us. Amen? Because... Sicknesses, when the enemy attacks, it also comes through the thoughts. And it attacks us symptoms and feelings. If you guys pay attention, I'll share a quick testimony when I was learning this stuff. So what would happen to me is I would get up in the morning and I would feel a symptom of some kind of, you know, like a cold symptom coming on. And I would get up and I would say, oh, no, here it comes again. Looks like, I, you know, I got the cold again. By the time I would get from my bed to the sink, there it went. It was, it was full blown. It was going. And then it would take me two, three days to fight it off. And I started asking, I'm like, what's going on? This is not right. And he showed me what I was doing, what I was, what I was accepting when it would start. Because it would always start with a thought or a feeling or a symptom or emotion. And so when I learned that, I started practicing if I would get up in the morning and if I would feel a symptom, I'd say, in Jesus' name, no, I am healed by his stripes. By the time I would get to my sink, all the symptoms were gone. And so either you can beat this thing in seconds, if you catch it in the beginning, or you have to deal with it and try to fight it off. What's easier? In the beginning, right? So the enemy, you have to remember that the enemy does not have a right to attach anything to us without our permission. And how he does it is through those symptoms, feelings, emotions, thoughts. And if we learn how to catch him in the beginning, we will never have that. But that's the key is catch it and not accept it. Why? Because you don't have to accept it. Because... Remember what we talked earlier? Is that everything that the devil has is a lie. Everything's a lie, 100%. He brings that lie, and we accept it. It starts attacking our body. And so I encourage everybody, pay attention. When you wake up, start watching. Pay attention. And if you get a symptom, start practicing saying no in the name of Jesus. And you will see that with time, you will overcome and you're not going to be able, you're not going to get sick anymore. But it always starts with a symptom and then it develops into a full blown sickness or disease or whatever it is. What's interesting is that 
when we minister to, um, to a lot of women that have cancer, and we talk to them, and it always starts out that at first, they either heard it on TV or heard somebody else talk about it, and the thought would come, what if it happens to you? After a little bit of time, a transition, it will most likely happen to you. After a little bit of time, you probably have it. After a little bit of time, start checking your body, you probably have symptoms. And then you have the symptoms, and then it's a full-blown cancer. That's how that works. But it doesn't have to be like that, because the truth is, by his stripes we are healed. When that, when that thought comes, say, in the name of Jesus, devil, you're a liar, by his stripes I'm healed. And if you do that, cancer cannot touch you. Sickness cannot touch you. Fear cannot touch you. Depression cannot touch you. I mean, you can walk through, like depression, same thing. It starts out with a thought, and it develops into a full-blown anxiety or fear or oppression, and then it turns into depression. You can just follow it through. It's very easy. Every time that you're experiencing something, you can follow it through how it started. And if you cut it out in the beginning, you never have to experience that. All we have to do is just choose what Jesus said instead. Jesus said, have peace. Jesus said, be healed. That's what Jesus offers us. That is his freedom, and it belongs to every believer. And so Isaiah 53 proves that, that that's what God said before Jesus ever came. And, it, and it, he, he did that, he accomplished that, he fulfilled that, he fulfilled that prophecy, and that's what, that next scripture we're going to read. And because of that, it is now our right. As children of God, new creation, it is our right to walk in that freedom. It belongs to us. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. And it, it cost him everything. It cost Jesus everything. It cost him his life. What he went through for us to receive this freedom is something that I don't think anybody could do here, especially to do it for somebody else. He already had all of that. He didn't need to do that for himself. He already had all of that. He did that, he did that for you and I so we can walk in that full freedom. And so it's important to learn what that freedom is and start walking it out and practically apply those principles in our life. Because you can know this Bible, you can quote it, you can do whatever, but if you don't start practically applying it, then you're not, gonna, you know, you're not going to walk in the benefits of this truth.